Alright, on the GMAT, the key idea in solving a question like this is understanding the word, the meaning of the word remainder. Uh, most people don't really understand what that word means anymore, and I'm just going to kind of give a little uh, quick intro into it before I actually answer this question. So say, for example, you wanted to figure out that there was a number that divides, that 5 divides into, but it gives you a remainder of 3. Well, the easy way to figure out a number like that is to, first of all, say, what does 5 go into perfectly? Okay, so think of a number that 5 goes into perfectly. The best number for that is 5. 5 goes into 5 perfectly. So if you want to figure out a number that 5 goes into but gives you a remainder of 3, you just take a number that 5 goes into, like 5, and then just add 3. So that means this would be like 8. So 8 over 5, when you divide it, think about it, 5 goes in 8 one time and a remainder of 3. So that's how that works. If I wanted a number that 5 goes into that gives me a remainder of 4, Again, you could do the same thing. Just think of something that 5 goes into. Now, I'm going to change what I picked this time. Instead of picking 5, I could pick something like 10, okay? And then, um, and all you have to do is just add 4 to that. So, 10 plus 4 is 14. So, obviously, 14 divided by 5 um, will give me a remainder of 4. So, this is how a remainder pretty much works. If we bring that same idea here, um, we have two numbers, P and Q. And when divided by 9, we get remainders of 2 and 7 respectively. But they're telling us here that the P is greater than the Q. Okay, That is very important. But as you notice here, the remainder of P is actually smaller than that of Q. So when I think about the number for P that divides into 9, sorry, um, P that divides into 9, um, that gives me a remainder of 2, okay, I really need to think about this number being maybe bigger than what I, I would traditionally want to pick. So normally I would want to probably pick 9 because 9 goes into 9 and then add 2 to it. But this time I'm going to go up a little higher and I'll pick 18 because I know 18 goes into 9, but I needed to have a remainder of 2. So I cannot pick 18. I have to say 18 plus 2 because remember what we did over here. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to say I know 9, I know 18. 9 goes into 18, but because I need a remainder of 2, I have to add 2 to it. So that means my P is 20. Okay, 18 plus 2 is 20. So I know when this happens, I will get a remainder of 2. So I know my P has to be 20. If you do the same thing for, um, for the Q, okay? Again, you want a number Q that goes into 9, but gives you a remainder of 7 this time, just like the question says. So in this case, I will pick something that 9 goes into and then add 7 to it. But in this case, because if you look at the way this question is set up, we want to make sure that our P is greater than our Q, okay? So I'm not going to do what I did here where I picked 18. I'm actually going to pick a lower number here just to ensure that the Q ends up being lower than the P. So in this case, I'm going to say, so what does 9 go into perfectly? Well, 9 goes into 9, but because I needed to have a remainder of 7, okay, 9 goes into 9, I'm going to then add 7 to it. So that means this number here can be 16 because 9 plus 7 is 16. And I know when I divide that, I would get a remainder of 7. So at this point, we've established what our Q is and what our P is. So we can go ahead and answer the rest of this question, which says find the remainder when P minus Q is then divided by 3. Well, my P, uh, my P minus Q. Well, my P is 20. My Q is 16 based on the math we've done here, which gives us 4. And then the question here is saying, divide that by 3 and tell us what the remainder is. Again, 3 goes in 4, it goes as far as 3, but there's 1 left over, you know. 3 goes as far, go, 3 divides into 4 one time, which goes as far as 3, but then there's a remainder of 1. And that's the answer to this question. The answer to the question is C. All we're doing here is understanding how to select our P and Q by picking a number that the 9 goes into and then adding the remainder we want. That's what we did here. So 9 goes in 18 because I wanted the P to be higher. 9 is going to do 18 perfectly, but remainder 2, you add 2 to it. 9 goes into Q perfectly. Um, well, as 9, 9 goes into 9 perfectly. And then because you want a remainder of 7, you add 7 to the 9, and that's how we got 16. When we get the P and Q, the rest is easy because you just subtract 20 minus 16, um, get 4, and then 4 divides into 3. But the remainder, remember, not how many times it goes, but the remainder is 1. And that's how we got our answer, which is C.